What is up people, my name is Anton and welcome to September. Today I sort of wanted to bring you a part two to the video yesterday um, about graffiti and decal covering and sort of box off that entire sort of customization, substance, painter, texturing approach as a whole. Um, I felt like the Procreate approach I sort of used yesterday was a little rushed and I sort of wanted to go over another way today where you can, for example, overlay stickers, um, some more tags and stuff on some more like street based um, assets like these. This is another Mega Scans asset, but it's an electrical box this time rather than a bin. Um, I made a mistake in the episode yesterday. I forgot to switch it to Aces right at the end when I was showing off that render. Um, but I was under a little bit of time pressure, and that's why today I sort of wanted to recap over it a little bit. But today we're going to be taking an asset like this and sort of using this kind of idea as a reference um, by taking loads of stickers and graph and sort of mucking it up a little bit. Um, again, just as an approach that you can use in your scene, um, these kind of methods really add detail to quite larger scenes. And it means that not only can you create a more realistic final result, but you can also break it down into more camera angles, which really show off detail on your assets, right? So I try preach it, it's quite a good technique to have. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to start getting into explaining how I do it. So we're going to work through this one together. But your main um, focus with this is going to be really collecting assets, right? So say we're going to be taking a look at like stickers. Obviously, you can sketch out your views and your camera angles to sort of figure out where you sort of want them to be. But initially, you want to sort of collect some ideas which you like. So I've gone ahead and picked out a load here, which sort of work quite well. Um, a lot of them are off Pinterest and you've got some movie references in there and some nice looking tags. Um, we'll try and make these into stickers as much as we can. Um, we're going to take some square shapes, some circular ones, and I've also got some black market assets here which are like more ripped ones, which add a little more wear to it. And what we'll do is likely overlay the graffiti and the sticker separate, but I'll show you how, how to composite it to a final result um, in Octane or Redshift, wherever you like, using some opacity masks. And we should get a pretty nice, worn looking final result. Um, and hoping to make something good. So if we get started, we can start getting a lot of these assets and sort of working our way in. So as we did yesterday, I believe this model is already UV'd, which is wonderful. So we will use Substance Painter again, but purely so we can layer things on. Um, it isn't necessary. It's just sort of an easy way of doing it. You can just hop into the material here um, and literally start, you know, exporting the UV and just placing all the stickers in Photoshop and then exporting that as a layer here and adding it to the albedo. But you start using a load of more like multiply nodes and add nodes um, and it gets a little confusing and Octane doesn't like it too much. You end up sort of messing about and rejigging things, oh, like activating them, turning them on and off until they work. And I've, I've sort of figured that this is a better way of doing things because you can, you can just export all these like textures here um, and it all comes out in one lot, which sort of I find a little easier. So if we take our scene here, take our geometry and really quickly just hit file export fbx similar to yesterday we can click ok and export this out so we can do electrical box making sure that fbx is getting saved out and we can load up substance painter and get this exported in um, we can go through a similar workflow of just importing the relevant textures like the base textures themselves um, as resources and then just layering them on the fbx so we can hit close and we can use FBX today because we're not going the Procreate route. So we can grab our electrical box, import it into Substance here, make sure it's a length for like 4096. Let this import and we've got our geometry there. We can head to file straight away, import resources, uh, quickly head over to cinema where it lets us locate where our texture is supposed to be. Hit locate and we can copy this go over to substance, add resources, paste our location in super quick and get our albedo, bum, displacement, normal, rather albedo, bum, normal, roughness and we'll leave it at that. Open them all in, select them all here and set them all to texture, import your resources to library, your assets, just so they're always there. You can import them straight away and we can do what we did where we layer them on, hit base color and make sure we're hopping over here to UV projection. This is the ooh, bump, I believe. I'm just going to set this to height. UV projection, normal, UV projection. 
This is a slightly more detailed, less weird looking asset as well. Um, we can set this to roughness, UV projection, and we're left with our base textures in, which is really cool. So now we can start making some of these stickers up, right? So if we make a new canvas in Photoshop super quick, our workflow for this is essentially going to be making the stickers each on a thousand by thousand canvas, um, exporting these to a folder done up nicely looking like stickers, um, and then importing those resources into Substance and then scaling them, scaling, scaling them onto this geometry, right? So we can take some of our assets, which look good, which are just here, and we can start working with these, right? So if we head over to Photoshop super quick, make sure you've got a tab open with references so you sort of know what you're looking at. And we can start making a few, maybe like square stickers. So if you make a new layer, we can get a rounded box here and we can start just sketching out some shapes or colors, which are cool. So always helps if you're trying to pick a color, try and find a palette. I spelled palette wrong again, <laughs> uh, but you can find a color palette so that if you've got multiple colors going on, you make sure they actually work together. So we can hop in here real quick and we're looking for some pretty outlandish looking palettes. Uh, so I'd say maybe you can, you, you want something city. So maybe, maybe a little more like grotesque sort of grimy feeling, um, but you don't want them to be too, too similar, right? You want them to sort of have a bit of personality. So, okay, you know what, we'll just go, we'll just go full saturation. So we can do that, paste this, oh, not in there. Rather, we can open palette. Um, nothing's going to copy the hex code, but we can just copy that, paste that in here. We've got a little palette we can go for if we need to pick colors. So we can zoom and size this down a little bit. And we can go about making a square super quick. And this is something that we'll probably copy paste over. We can have a few square stickers, but we want some other shapes too. And I've just messed that up, but we can pull ourselves a yellow sticker here. Setting our thing object here to fill and then content aware. Oh, not content aware, sorry, color. And then picking that yellow here with the eyedropper tool, clicking OK. And then we've got sticker just here. We can get one of our assets over. So for example, we can think about something which might fit this one a little better. Um, we can go for this. I believe it's actually an artist logo. I think I've listened to some of his music before. And we can set this to a blending mode that works in our favor. So like this. We've already got a pretty nice looking sticker there. We could add some more detail to this, but just looking over. Keep checking out your assets, seeing what kind of look you're after. See a lot of these sort of have a little bit of roundedness, but they need um maybe maybe some sort of uh, wrinkles in it. They look quite good. But I'm debating whether to add the displacement channel or the bump or just add it or the albedo itself. Maybe that'll be quite easy to find. If we just head over to Google super quick. I try to keep my workflows as authentic as possible because this is genuinely how I create my results. You could go for sticker wrinkles. Maybe something like that. And you get a load of facial stuff, but it is something like this, which we're after, right? So if we're lucky, we may well be able to list. This is pretty much what we want. This is pretty much what we want. That's almost like an overlay that we want. So we could size this down even and take our concept there and literally, so this has got some white in the background. We want to PNG that super quick. Um, it's not going to let us very easily. We may have to be a little smart about this. So if we duplicate this, we can head to image adjustments, brightness and contrast. Let's see if we can brighten this down. Um, so what's that? What that's going to let us do, and increase the contrast a little bit. Um, what that's going to let us do is hopefully select the outside. So bear in mind that if you're trying to select the outside of images like this, so you can like remove the, um, the background or whatnot. Um, it let me do it on this because this was darker and or not on this one because it's you see it's all light um, So Photoshop can't really distinguish the colors too much. So it does actually help you to um, Sometimes color correct it a little bit to add a little more contrast so Photoshop can reprocess it 
Um, interesting little tip there. But now you can see if we control click on that, head back to our white here, um, we can select inverse and just delete the white. Um, very subtle, but obviously that's going to become relevant when we export to substance. So now we can take our idea here. Rather, we can resize our yellow to fit this. And we can create a clipping mask on that. It's going to fit over. And we can set this to a blending mode, which makes this yellow pin light. Add our little character there. Maybe better to head to normal here and just delete the white itself. Or rather, rasterize it. Delete the white itself. And go for these. And we can find a blending mode which makes this look like the black is actually on it. Which doesn't actually seem to be one. We've got soft light there, but it's not quite the effect we're after. So what we may have to do is take this, create a clipping mask on that, and find something which looks a little better. So we've got some greys there, but it's not really what we want. Um, we can try color correct this a little more. So we can enter brightness and contrast, see if this fixes it, which it does seem to be able to do, to be fair. I'd say that's a pretty good result. You're getting the wrinkles in and it looks all right. So this can literally be our first sticker here. We can head to file, export, quick export is PNG, um, find our sticker assets and do, just create a folder called finals real quick. Hop in there and start naming these off. So that can be number one. Um, if possible, it might be quite cool to have a few more of these, but it looks like I have a bit of freedom here. So we can copy this, head into Photoshop, and we can paste our new sticker here. We can click Enter, do the same thing as last time. So we head to wait, Control J to duplicate the layer really quick. Head over here to Adjustments, Brightness, we can brighten this down a little bit, increase the contrast, select the outside, click delete on all that. Um, and we should have a pretty PNG result there. There may actually be some uh, residue. Yeah, there is a little bit of residue there, but maybe better to... Mm -hmm. So if we re-enable our background real quick, hit Control i to invert it, it'll give us a better idea of... Um, where the residue is, right? So we've got a little bit of, we can even duplicate this, hit adjustments. Threshold is a really simple way to sort of segregate the background from the foreground. So you can sort of pin this down until you get just a sticker and then you can select the middle bit like that, right click, select inverse, head back to our original layer, hit delete. Do the same thing to our this layer actually proved useful last time because we could render it over the over the um, roughness of the oh sorry over the uh, graphic of the sticker. So we can take this, find another palette that we like. So we'll go for like an orange this time. We can probably eye drop that in, so we we'll go straight there. Turn that off. We can duplicate. Well, I'm going to just take this layer mask and duplicate it because I'm a bit lazy. We can make that visible. Turn this on. Um, take this and we can should be able to fill color pick out our dropper tool out like here okay okay and we can create clipper mask this is a little waste switch through the blending mode see which one works this one's a little better and we can find our graphic that we want on this one so we can pick out a um, I think this hydro pro one looks pretty good um Trying to think, so maybe, maybe this neighborhood one would be a bit better. We can switch that in here. And we can, it's quite a nice one. We can do a mixture of things so we can threshold this super quick so that we're taking out a lot of the sort of like low resolution. We can head over to select color range and tap on the white. That's going to delete all of the white oh, after we rasterize it. We'll be able to delete all, all the white, so it's just the black there. Um, we can just go about selecting these sort of like white bars here, that are being a bit of a nuisance. And we can turn on our other layer, set this to create a clipping mask, 
and activate this down until we're getting the result we want. So we can have another black on um black on black on orange. So let's do difference image. Head to brightness and contrast real quick, and brighten this down. Increase contrast rather. Maybe we can go for a little more of a grey. We don't want it to be too dark. We can hit OK on that. Disable our final layer and hit export. Quick export is PNG. And we can set this as number two. And slowly you can see that you're starting to get up um, your assets. So we've got two square ones now. So we may start thinking about some other ones. We've got some, oh, some other graph there. We've got some other stickers. And let me just think about how many assets we got. Might as well use all of these now that we've got them. So we've used two. We've got a fair few left, and a lot of these we can probably fit on these type of stickers. So if we head over, we can disable all of these. We can probably control G, just they're all grouped, and it's easy to manage the Photoshop file a bit better. We can start dragging some of these in. So that red sticker will probably do. We can drag that in here and size this down, something that fits a bit nicer like that. Um, you can see we're getting a little bit of transparency, which we don't necessarily want. So we can just duplicate that, merge them together. That could be one sticker. We can head over to, we've got some white there, which is more like tape. Um, we've got that, which is more of a product sticker, I'd say. We've got that, which is quite bright. That's also quite bright. I'm looking for some of these more reds. Actually, that, that green could probably do. Size that over. Size that down to something like this. They're all PNG nicely for us, so it saves us a little bit of time in Photoshop. We can head back over, start working with some of these until we see something that we like. So that green one we've already got. That red one looks pretty good. We can take that over. This one's also a little bit transparent, I've noticed. So we can take that. Control J to duplicate it and just merge them. Quite subtle, but you can tell it's transparent if you're seeing the checkerboard through the actual image. Quite rare, but I think it just seems to be a, a factor with these stickers here. Um, a lot of these are pretty ruined. I think that one we've already got. I like the look of that orange one just up there. You've actually got the names here, to be fair. So you can have torn orange. Perfect. Drag this one over. I used this one in a project I recently worked on. Size this all the way down. We're seeing a little bit of transparency there again. So we duplicate that. Merge it. We're getting one, two, three, four. So we've used about six of our assets now, I believe. Um, this one could probably be a sticker in itself, to be fair. So can this one. And we've got two little bits of graph there. That could be a sticker in itself. So if what we go go ahead and do is start overlaying some stuff, we can, for example, these. this is fairly simple. So you can quite literally... Oh, don't know why it's taking a minute to load. We can overlay this. Rasterize the layer super quick. Set this to... Or you could even have this white on orange just to make it a little different from the other one you can size this up just like this um, create a clipping mask for this and you can see it's going over where there's a slight rip there so the way I do that is duplicate the sticker layer super quick go to our old friend threshold literally hop in here and try separate where that rip occurs so for me it's here and what you do is select where the black is which is fairly easy um, right click, go select inverse, and if you toggle the visibility of that, go back to our texture and hit delete, it's going to delete where all of that rip is basically. Um, so you can re enable the clipping mask on that to get rid of the white there, and you can see we're getting some pretty good, pretty good looks. Um, we can have a little scroll through just to see if there's anything that looks a bit better. I reckon black on orange actually looks a little better, so you can keep that. Um, rather, if we wanted to change the orange, we could quite easily just head here adjustments, hue saturation, sort of peel through here until we see something that we like. We can go for like a red like this, hit OK. Export, quick export is PNG. And it's a pretty rinse and repeat method to create stickers at this point, but this is a pretty cool way that I managed to do it. We can head over to our other sticker here, grab ourselves a, let me think, we can go for something like this. Obviously we just made a red one, so we'd want this one to be a little bit different. Rinse and repeat the same method. So if we size this up, um, oh, wait for this to work. Uh, create rasterize the layer. Sorry, create a clipping mask on this. We can position this down something here. 
we can pass this through so that it's red on black like that. Duplicate the layer super quick and get our old threshold out back on something like this. Select the black, select inverse, head to our layer, delete, re enable the clipping mask, get rid of the edges, and we can head over here to adjustments, use saturation, find ourselves maybe a nice purple, which works quite well. Hit OK. We could even go back. That looks pretty cool. I like, I like the way this looks. We can hit File, Export, Quick Export is PNG. That's number four. Head down, we've got two more stickers to do. So we can head over here. <coughs> uh, we could probably make this a Hydro Pro. Can't remember if I used that one before. I think I used, I used Show Tech before, I believe. Of course, we've got this. These are literally random little assets that I found off Pinterest. Obviously, the internet's a pretty wide place. You can find your own. You can head over to Create Clipping Mask. Um, head over to the fact that that even looks quite good. So. I like the way that sort of overlays there. You could threshold this one more time. Go over here. Select the black. Copy. Oh, rather, no, no, no. Select inverse. Head over to our asset. Delete. And we've got our Hydro Pro overlay sort of like fluorescent sticker there, which looks pretty sick. Make sure we're creating a clipping mask on that. Head to File, Export, Quick Export PNG. So it's to number five. And then we can go to our final sticker and go into our sticker assets and potentially go for, so a lot of these we've used, maybe something more like this. And that'll be the last one of our asset based stickers, the final ones we just need to create by ourselves. We can head down here, click rasterize layer, uh, create clipper mask. Locate this over. Something like this. And just to save us a little bit of time, we can leave it like that because it doesn't actually go over the sticker. Duplicate this super quick. Create clipping mask. We want to duplicate this. So, because you saw a little bit of transparency there. And we can hit <laughs> get the skincare off my screen. We can go file, export to PNG. Set this number six. And finally, we can find the stickers which we thought might look pretty cool on their own. So make a new layer. In fact, maybe just group all this so that it's a little easier to manage again. Get a new layer. Move this up here. Unvisible that. Head up here. Find our... So this one, we, I said, looks pretty sick. So you can size that up a little bit we're working with a little bit of low resolution but i really don't want to get rid of the color because i think it'll be quite a nice little asset so we can rasterize that duplicate this up head to in fact we may we may well just be able to yeah we're able to do that so you can just do that head to filter noise noise so you're getting a pretty good idea of the workflow here you're just trying to remove the background as much as you possibly can um so try to jazz the stickers up as much as possible because the more you do here, the less you have to sort of like work on creating a look in Octane or Substance Painter. So that's number seven. This can be a bit of a cleaner, cleaner sticker. And then finally, we can go for the World Is Yours sticker and the Alkaline Records, which looks pretty sick. And then the graffiti itself, we mainly just remove the background, but we can go about importing that too. So if we head over here, import that, size this up a little nicer. We're also working with all of them on the same canvas. So it should be fairly easy once we get into substance. If we rasterize this, this one we will need to likely um, threshold, just increase the resolution a little bit. We can head over here to threshold, just like that, because it's a pretty easy way of doing it. And we can steal the color by linear dodge, adding that. Um, rather, it may be, it may be easier just to eye drop this color here, um, create a little box over this one, and then replace the black from that threshold with a blending mode. So we can hit the color here. Ooh. Make sure we're Retabbing in on color and picking up the eyedropper tool there. 
I mean, quickly scrolling through to oh, once we've clipping mask this. Sign on to something that works. This is still on its blending mode, so we need to make sure we're working with it. So something like this, perfect. You can hit file, export, safe web legacy, wrong one. Quick export as PNG, just seems to work a little better. Hit number eight, we're getting less wrinkles on these ones, but hopefully it isn't too much of an issue. They'll just add with the shininess of the roughness. They can just be neater stickers. And we can super quickly, for the sake of this, drag in a world is yours. In fact, this one's slightly cheesy. I might just do the this one here, which I quite liked. We say the eyes, chico. The eyes, they never lie. It's a Scarface reference. And we can duplicate that over, rasterize the layer. Um, let me think. You probably want to threshold this too. So you could take the outline like this. Um, you could delete that. And then delete this other layer here. And I mean, even there, you've got a pretty nice looking sticker. Um, I'd be sort of, I'd, I'd sort of want to add some sort of a, a wrinkle to this one just to really make it sort of pop more as a sticker. Um, we may be able to create a clipping mask on this, get a few of these crinkles in. So just like that. Let's set this to. Although we could uh, do a little thing something creative here. So create a clipping mask for this. So this is shaped to the uh, shape of the sticker itself. And then grab another sticker here and try overlay that, which somehow sometimes actually has a better result. So you've got the eyes, cheek or there. That one that looks pretty good. We want some more. Uh, that's soft light, so I'd almost duplicate this a few times quite an irrational method but you do sort of get get what you want um looking about even inverting this a few times sort of seeing if we get a result we like that's almost like a metallic sticker um although we're getting a little bit of a loss of the texture there we could create a little mask one more time or rather, we've messed that up a little bit. Hold on. Need to delete, delete. I'll tell you a good bit of something like this, really. Looks pretty nice. You can head to File, Export, Quick Export is PNG. And now, if we just, I've been doing this for a while, I'm aware, but you can skip through this bit. We can just grab our graffiti and one by one start taking the background off this. So that it becomes valid. So we can take these, rasterize layer, rasterize layer, rasterize layer. As I'm doing this, I'm sort of worried that I'm hoping Substance picks up the fact that it's PNG. Otherwise, all my background moving work would have been for in vain. Um, Rather in this situation, we may we may well just be able to be getting a little bit of a loss of quality here. We can export this as just remembering that the graffiti is not 100% transparent. We can export it like this. Do do the graffiti can be black, not a problem. And this one here, export because export PNG 12. And now we should be good to start arranging some of this in Substance Painter. So if we head over to file up here, import resources, add resources, we can find the location of our final sticker assets, select all of these, head to open, we can do control A and import these all as a texture, import resources to library your assets and let this process through. And we should have all of our stickers appear on the left um, for us to drag in and arrange in our project. So. Here they are. You can see which ones are PNG and which ones aren't. It's looking like I might be in luck. But if we create some new layers here, obviously we've got our UVs on the right, our textures on the left. Sorry, our UVs on the right and our geometry on the left. 
and this is where we're going to go about arranging it so we can sort of just whack them wherever we want at this point we can take some of our stickers make sure we're saying this to base color luckily the png is working which is amazing and we can start dragging this over wherever we like so we've got our rotation our scale in here um i'd almost be inclined to sort of drag this where you want it you've done the hard bit by making the stickers so you can really just piece it. it's making the layers automatically for you you can set the rotation out here um you can i'm just thinking that i hope these sort of you you've got a little bit of scale in there um so if you set this to physical size or rather you need to set the pre 3d just if you see what i mean you're getting cut off a little bit and that's because it creates this weird like 3d depth like processing square around it so you just want to turn this up a little bit um oh, i'm not sure where you do it actually without scaling it properly i think you might need to set this to physical size yeah and then you can size that up like that and rescale this to something that works so we can make this like that make this a neighborhood sticker there go about setting our other ones this one seems to oh, 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 we want to make sure we're making a new layer there so we can make a new layer drag our red sticker over do the same thing set this to physical size rotate this over scale this up a tiny bit start dragging these over you can see it's working quite nicely over the geometry the only thing that we bear in mind we want to bear in mind is that we don't want the bump to be over the stickers themselves um, but that may be something we can fix in Photoshop later on or we can leave it we can sort of see what the final look looks like make sure we're dragging over some more stickers rotating these over physical size seems to be the best bet so we can scale this up rotate this about I can't I want the I like the idea of this one being a bit bigger and you're getting, starting to get some pretty nice warm looks obviously this is very much compared to um, sorry to, um, dependent on what your uh, how many assets you've done and what they look like I'm just going to quickly hop back here and re-export that one because for some reason that looks a little funny I think almost like I might have exported it wrong um, if I head down here to I don't was it don't think it was that one It was that one, but I had to export super quick. I'll quick export this PNG. So re export that as number five. Yes. Not sure why there was a little bit of black over that one, but we can import resources and just try to find that one more time. Don't know why I'm still doing that. It's really weird. And I've got it there too. Um, bit of a weird Photoshop glitch there, potentially. Um, if I just scoot over and find out what it is, what is it that what does it actually look like? It's uh, same one from the purple, isn't it? Okay, hold on. So just a little bit of live problem solving here. We can head over, find wherever that purple. Ah, it's that because it's still visible on the right. So now we can export. Create was PNG number five. We probably want to redo the red one as well there. So if we head down to our red, I think it was that one, was it? Well, oh, create was PNG. Re-export that over, and that's that problem solved. So we can head back over to import resources, add resources, and just find those two which got marked up. Hopefully that's not anything else. Doesn't look like it. We can set OK or Control A and do 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 same process as before chuck these over and while this quickly saves any second just give us the ability to drag our stickers back in really quick if this crashes i'll be absolutely devastated sweet and we can find this is going to show us only our recently imported textures over here but it's fine because our other ones are still there we can set this over to physical size make sure we're scaling this up same as before um, make this one a little bigger because we're getting a little bit of cut off there. And um, you can also overlay the stickers, which is a pretty cool effect. But I'll do that sparingly because we've got quite a, quite a lot of space here on the canvas. So we do have the freedom to sort of do what we like. That one looks pretty cool. 
We can move it over as well, but bear in mind, obviously stickers don't really head over like that. So maybe, maybe for the sake of this, we can go about um, overlaying these. So we can move this one over, maybe something like, This, so we're getting a tiny bit of overlay. Um, we can find our red sticker, drag that over, oh God, over here maybe somewhere. Mm, something like this, where you can set this to physical size. Scale this up slightly. Size this up, rotate it around to something a bit more vertical. Size this down ever so slightly. Okay, let's put it over that, which looks pretty sick. And we can just quickly locate where our other textures were. So we've got the neighborhood image we've already imported. I think a lot of these we already have in now. The only ones we're missing are the 17 bit one, which looks pretty sick. You can have that maybe somewhere here. We can have our outline record. So we'll, I think a lot of them are quite central here. We can make some maybe slightly bigger ones. This one looks pretty good, so we can always scale on this one's a bit messy, but we can set this to physical size. Um, we actually need to edit the projection of this because for some reason it's being a bit strange. Um, but we can do that here, fine. Can rotate this. Oh, oh, oh. I think maybe something to do with the projection on this one specifically. But we can still, hopefully, um, projection depth, so rotation, I guess like this. We'd have to scale this down here just with a little bit of tweaking. We want this one quite big. Maybe slightly too big, but we can set this to point, point 0.15, point 0.2. Perfect. So we've got a nice fat sticker there, which looks pretty good. And we can get our the eyes chico. So that's a base color. Um, we can move that just here under here. I think we a pretty good spot for that one. We can rotate this round. Um, we can try scale this up if we like, but I quite like the size of that one. So just there and already you can see that a lot of this is sort of just like dressing up your scene your geometry and making it look cool your own way so we can send you layer and start going about just dragging over some of our graph the graph's a little easier because you can rotate this over um, and you can just set the blending mode so we can all oh, project in depth shouldn't be too much of an issue but we can I think, increase the size of this rotate this we can get a little bit of graffiti maybe in the middle here set this to likely linear dodge add all or not will be multiply <clears throat> and we can get that there we can fill up the gaps which we're seeing so set this over to physical size again scale some of these bits up and set a little bit of height it is a tedious process but i genuinely believe that at the end you are getting a result which you're pretty happy with uh, multiply um, shit, maybe we can even scale this up a bit more just to really fill up some bits just like that which I think is quite cool um, you might be able to change the colour of this but yeah, you'd have to do that in Photoshop and or there may be a way that you can do it here which I'm not 100% sure of yet but once you export the maps you can do it in Photoshop too and we can get our last tiny bit of graph and fit it somewhere where we feel like they might need a little more a little more action size this up super quick scale this make sure we're saying this to physical size um oh that's the rotation we're changing there scale it like that set this to multiply and we can maybe just dash this nicely positioned here but this one I'd want to have under the stickers. So the stickers sort of take a bit of priority. Um, looks pretty cool. But I'd have the, yeah, I'd have it under both of them most likely. So we can just drag this layer down until it is under 
both of our stickers. Or we could leave it like that, so just under one and hovering over the other. And just like that, we're getting a pretty cool look of some graphed up, stickered up electricity boxes. So, now we have a few options. The Where my head is at is that I know full well that I could export this out now um, and have the stickers and graffiti baked into the texture of the electricity boxes themselves but i don't like how the bump is coming through this um don't like how the bump is coming through these stickers it looks okay on the graffiti because the graffiti is pen painted on but it looks a little strange on the stickers so i'd be inclined to sort of the stickers themselves will be quite um quite reflective and I'm just thinking that if I export this separately so we can export the to be honest for this we may need to have this graffiti under the sticker it's just a slight little problem I think that I'm going for um actually now nah, we will we will we will just so it looks a bit better we can have that there and what we have to do is separate the layer visibility of the graffiti and then the stickers themselves right so if we head over to uh, so this is where naming them would be pretty useful but it's okay for now we've got some graph there so it's the stickers we want to we want to take through so we can take that off take that off that off that off too hopefully you will see exactly what i mean here um so it makes sense and sort of donates a little something interesting to the final look we can take that visibility off, take that visibility off, and these will be free to export textures as um, as, com as, a, as a combination. So we can set our thing here, new folder called electricity box. I've said this before, but plenty of times I've worked for projects and um, just exported it to the default export folder and Substance for some reason just automatically replaces all the textures, which gets really frustrating. Um, if you kind of want them kept, especially with Octane, you know, it just it launches the um, location of them and just replaces them, and it's a pain. Um, but we can select the folder there, making sure we're setting um, Arnold AI standard, which is pretty much my go-to for this, and you can just hit export, and that is going to bake all of the graffiti and stick. Um, sorry, just graffiti and electricity box textures in one. So you'll see that if we just head over to Octane super quick, load up our render roads to wake it up a little bit and we can go about replacing or rather we need to locate first where our um, lucky luckily ooh, this has a little control c we can go back to sql d load this up here find our new textures which should be just here if they've been created yet, I think they have been. Sweet, and we can pick out our, click yes here, and our graffiti is gonna come in, which is all nice, looking nice and fresh. Um, we can, our bump should be, I'm just gonna quickly tab out the camera here. Uh, the bump looked a little more active on So I'm unsure. Is it something to do with that? Nah, it isn't. Well, let's just go about quickly replacing the bump. Let's see if that has any effect on the graffiti. I'm just making sure we're setting the height there. Yes. And it doesn't seem to, which is fine. Um, we may just be inclined to. Oh, rather well, we can leave the creed the way it is for now. Um, I was going to say I'd add a mask or an add node here to sort of add to the um, bump to the graffiti, but I feel like it might just cause more hassle. So we can just leave this looking a little fresher than it normally would, I suppose. Or rather, we would have the ability to head back into substance here. And so you see what I mean? Um, we'd have the ability to head back into substance here and literally untag the bump normal and roughness um, I 
I think we'll leave it. Otherwise, this tutorial is going to take an entire tangent and it may start to get a little more complicated than normal. But what you, what you would do is I'd export this with a white background and then use that mask to sort of, I guess, add a little bit of shine to this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to create a new layer here. Um, fill this using this function, I believe. We can fill this with white. So we're getting a completely white set there. Um, export textures. Right, now this is what I was on about earlier. You'd want to make a new tab here. Electricity box. Uh, box V2. Graph. Rough. So you can do that. Select folder. Don't you start. Select folder. Set this to AR standard. Export it one more time. And what you'll see is we should, uh, at this point, we just paste in our electricity box rather and get to this one. We've got our graffiti by itself. Now this has separated the graffiti from the um, textures of the electricity box, right? So what we can do at this point is head back into Octane super quick, go to our material and take a look at our roughness tab. And if all goes to plan, we should be able to, for example, just set up an add node um, take our roughness texture here, we'll set this to texture 2 um, add just control to duplicate this um, add one more, set over here go to our box v2 graph rough, import this now we set this to add, this is going to be straight on black so we may need to uh, see if this has any effect which it doesn't, which is wonderful. Um, maybe if we invert this back. Mm, I was really hoping I'd be able to get some sort of effect from the roughness there. But it almost seems like, it looks like we are actually getting some bump, but it's just far less visible because of the way the graffiti is maybe if we to lack any confusion i'm just going to head back um you could tweak that to your liking and sort of really fix that up um, i'm starting to think that another way of doing it may literally just be toning down the um the state of the the sorry opacity of the graffiti in substance um you can see here it's, it's pretty much straight on but I was just hoping that the the bump itself would shine through a little more, but it doesn't seem to be doing it. It looks quite photoshopped. But if we head back real quick, we can focus on the stickers a little more. So now we can head over here. We need to reactivate our stickers. So we can delete this sort of like fill layer, which we made. Um, we can turn the albedo on. Uh, no, we don't need the albedo actually. We can disable our graffiti layers. And we can activate our stickers one by one. So we've got our roughness channels here. We've got we'll just check them through. So we're enabling them one by one, making sure you're getting the right ones which you want. We've got some stickers here, some of that, some of that, 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 and that's graffiti. And that's graffiti. So what you can do here is you want to oof. You'd want to export this, but it's going to export it with this pretty grey background. So again, I just go about creating a fill layer um, and setting this to something a little mad. So you kind of want a correct colour that you can quick, quite easily remove, right? So let me think really quick. Um, you could pick, I suppose, I suppose, bright red. We just want something that we can really easily remove in Photoshop, um, something which isn't used by any of these. Maybe this sort of aqua would be quite good. We could we could of course use straight black. I don't don't know why I didn't think of that before. We, we could literally just use black. So select black here real quick, hit file, export textures, and we need to merge this in a way that only takes the stickers and puts it over our electrical box in Octane. So we can head over here, more box textures, making sure we hit and enter on that. Load in here, select the folder, onward AI standard, export everything here. 
And what we can do is now head over to Photoshop, I believe, and we need to load up um, where our stickers are. So this, we can right click and hit open with Adobe Photoshop. And if we try to drag this into Octane, it would be an absolute mess because we'd have to remove the black somehow and it'll be other nose all over the place. Um, in Photoshop, we can quite literally select and do that. And that is our problem solved. So now what we can do is a few things. We've got the stickers separated from the background here. So we can re-add a black background here purely for export purposes. Ooh, any second. We can re-add a background here, hitting fill, go to black, okay. Export this here, click export as um, stickers. Or rather we've already got one, it's quite dumb of me. Um, instead what you'd want to do in Photoshop is um, duplicate this, drag this over. You want to make all these stickers white and you're going to understand why very soon when we right click and click create a clipping mask on this. This is going to be our opacity mask for applying these stickers. So we can nickname this opacity. And what will happen is in Octane when we bring this in, um, it will. So what you want to do is create a mixed material in this instance. So we need a new Octane material um, and we probably want to set this to something like glossy. And ideally, what we'd be able to do is if we just set this, drag this material over the top real quick, um, we can plug in our textures that we need. So we've got this one and this one, drag those in super quick. Um, you will see our stickers here will align up once you plug that into the diffuse, just like that. Um, and they'll be shiny because it's a glossy material, which is important, sort of separates it from the geometry a little bit. And we've got our opacity mask, which when we plug into opacity, will make the rest invisible. And now this is a material, which you can see we've got our nice looking stickers there. This is a material that we're going to want to mix with our, set this to aces super quick, uh, save this up. This is a material we're going to want to mix with our um, original one. So we can head over to mix here, oh, mix material. Uh, we can grab our material number one and our material number two. And you'll see it's going to mix it 50-50 by opacity, which is not what we want. We should be able to plug this layer in. And just like that, if we delete both of these now and drag our mixed material on, we have the graffiti and the stickers over the geometry of our electricity box, um, which looks really cool. I'm liking the way this looks. It looks quite nice. And you can see that if you do this on a quite a larger scale, um, you start to get some really cool ideas and it is a um, workflow which I've used quite a lot so it served me and I thought it would be worth making a video on. Um, the stickers themselves, the way they catch light and the crinkles look really cool. Um, the only thing which is still bugging me is the way this graffiti looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and fix this up a little bit. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this into Photoshop super quick. Um, I'm going to see if I can find where I exported the um, graffiti alone to. So I think it was this one here. We can open this with Photoshop. Um, I want to find where the um, bump for just the electricity box was, right? So I think it was this one. Because um, this is something which has a lot of detail to... Well, maybe it's the normal, it's the issue. I'm, I'm actually unsure. But ideally, what I wanted to do was sort of have this mapped over the graffiti somehow. Or maybe just turn down the opacity of it a little bit. If I back in the substance here and I remove this fill layer, I activate all our albedos and whatnot. And make sure they're all working. In fact, we could probably go out deleting this. And going through and just enabling our graffiti back. Our bump layer has disappeared. Let me just get our roughness out. I think it may, it may be our normal, which is actually adding a bit of roughness. And then our bump, you can see there. Mm, we want something a little more on these boxes. So maybe if I let me just take a look at these assets here. This roughness looks like it has some pretty cool details in. So maybe if we take that even, we can just literally head in the Photoshop here. Delete the bump, which looks a little weirdly blurred. We can grab our roughness, hit this over, rasterize this, and then 
I'd, I'd be inclined to duplicate this really quick. Um, click select, color range, remove the white so that when we map the, although it looks, it looks a little funny that way, we may need to just, we want something like, you want, you want, the, you want the buff, the roughness just on the graffiti, so like that, like that. Like this, and we want to make this a little darker, so we can just hit I to invert that, and we're getting some, I'd say maybe we can just hit image here, adjustments, brightness, contrast, and brightness down, just so it's a little above black, but it's not completely, like, boring, right? So we can set this up here. Let's go up, see what we're working with. Add a little bit of noise, just like that. So we're getting a little more, a little more like variation. Tick monochromatic. Turn this down slightly. Hit OK, and we can probably go to here to export. Quick export is PNG and PT fixed. Maybe we can even call this. And what we do is load this uh, so we disable all of our layers here apart from the originals take this off just work off all those stickers and we'd import our fixed graffiti texture that we just did which maybe in that it's in this one here graffiti fixed let's say this is texture Import to library your assets, import that. Um, just locate where that is, set this to most likely base color. Set this to, oh, 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 oh. Set this to, to UV projection. Set this back to multiply. And I'm hoping that although it still sets multiply, it should bring a little more detail from the roughness map that we just overlaid in Photoshop out. So maybe we can hit file, export textures here. Or maybe we can even go here, import that texture again, set it to like roughness or something here. So that when we set that to UV projection, we're also getting a little bit of shininess on where that um, graffiti was painted. Although this looks far too fresh. So what I'd want to do is, is there a way we can color create this a little bit? Um, doesn't seem so but that's fine maybe we can do that as that it still looks pretty good we can hit export textures here make a new folder just for the sake of it final box textures I always do this and it turns out it's already a checkbox somewhere that just says don't replace textures we can select that folder size and then export textures let that do its thing, open the output directory here, head back into C4D, and just to finally fix this up, we can rotate this round and replace the textures in here to fix up this graffiti for the final time. We can head here. It's not an electricity box, it's final box textures. And we can get that in, which didn't have an effect, so I'm really hoping that if we get our displacement here, get rid of this add node even that's added a little bit of something there but if we take that off super quick load up our roughness texture we just made that did actually fix the issue there but I really want to prove to myself that I managed to do it the right way this way we can head to final box textures load up our roughness which is literally the same texture drag that in and we've got a little bit of fixed reflection, which is on the graffiti there, which makes it look way more real. Um, if you wanted to, you could also you could also wear that down a little bit. But we're liking the way this is looking right now. It looks pretty cool. And then you can go about compositing this in your scene. You can obviously tweak the lighting as you like. Fit this wherever you want to fit this. But for now. I will leave you with this technique for decaling and graffitiing your assets. And I may close off graffiti as a whole after this because I've made three videos on this and I'm unsure how much more there is I can do. Of course, you are working with software and there's a huge amount of ways, like a plethora of ways that you can really utilize this technique. 
Um, I have a scene that I'm working on, which is in a tube station where I was trying to put graffiti on a tube. Um, and I went through a whole workflow where I had to duplicate the mesh, re-UV doors where I wanted it to be because UVing the whole tube itself was too much of an issue. And then I had to um, like have that geometry pasted over the original one with an opacity map for that, for that um, graffiti over the original geometry, which it turns out Cinema 4D doesn't like. So I had to position that very slightly off. There's all sorts of ways you can do it. And there's a lot of problem solving involved. But if you're a psychopath like me, you kind of love it. So um, I appreciate everyone watching. Thank you very much. Um, I'm trying to push out as much knowledge as I can. Hope you guys appreciate that. The grind really is real. And um, having said that, if you have any ideas, leave them down below. I do read all the comments and I love the support. Um, and I will see you very soon in the next video. So thank you for watching.